While you might feel most comfortable hanging around people your age, you might want to try spending time with people of a different generation. Dr. Lori Stevick Russ is here to tell us why it's important to build intergenerational, intergenerational relationships. She's a psychologist and the author of Put On Your Big Girl Shoes, Stepping Into Courage, Resilience, and Gratitude. I think this is such an important, I visit a lot of nursing homes, and I see how they react when young people visit these nursing homes. Mm -hmm. It changes the lives of both the visitor and the visitee. Absolutely, and that's the that's absolutely the critical element of this. So I think you know we think about diversity, and whether you're working in a business environment, a healthcare environment, or just even in your own lives in your community, we often think about diversity in different ways. But typically, we don't think about it as an age issue. No. That generational relationships is about adding more diversity to our lives. And so, as you know, I had the the great privilege of having my grandmother live to the age of 105. 105. Yeah. Yeah, with so a very remarkable. healthy, intact brain. And her message um, just before she passed away a little over a year ago was really about making sure that people who didn't have grandparents or have access to this kind of relationship, that we made, made every effort in her name to make sure that we are funding and supporting and creating intergenerational programs. And you've actually started a foundation. We did, we did. It's called Nana's Tribe Foundation. Um, and it, it's the whole mission and purpose is to do just that, bring generations together, but not not really just for like a one and done, like, okay, you go to a baseball game right. and you enjoy each other. It's about building relationships. Because right. one of the things that we know is that social isolation and depression are the two big issues that seniors face, but just coincidentally, it's also the two big issues that college freshmen struggle with. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And so when we, what, one of our projects is to bring those two groups together and say, you're both struggling with the same thing. Yeah. What if we put you in a classroom in a college setting and you were taking classes together, which forced you to work on projects, group interactions, and developing a relationship right. that both parties, to your point, benefit. Not just the seniors. This isn't like we're just doing something kind-hearted for the seniors. That our college-age kids will benefit as well, and that's just one of the programs that we're looking at. Do you think our social age, the you know, being on our phones, these for young people especially, is is leading to social isolation? I think I, I definitely think it is. Yeah, it is absolutely because again, it's your um, your internal, and we know that we are social creatures of habit. There's a reason that isolation in prison, or you know, when we give somebody solitary confinement, it's a punishment. We are creatures that require contact, physical contact, physical contact, emotional connections with other people. And you know that, that changes as people get older and they lose family and they start to lose those connections. But also I think for, for kids, and I say kids like can be little ones, can be college age children, can be people in their 30s and their 40s that don't have the benefit of what a generation above or two generations above can grant them. It's just the whole different perspective taking that we all benefit from. And I know that I certainly did as a grown woman with a grandmother, um, you know, for that many years. Yeah, and, and you know, th for people who don't have grandparents, I was lucky enough to grow up with my, with my grandmothers, not my grandfather so much, and I kind of developed that relationship and mm -hmm. saw the importance of being with them. But there are many places that you can go out there mm -hmm. to connect with older people Absolutely. and older people to get involved with younger people as well. Yeah, I mean, think about what our, you said you go into the nursing homes. What do most of our seniors say? I don't want to go to a senior center. I don't want to be around old people. That's what, that's what my mother says. Yeah, they don't my want to be around old people. And why? Because they want the energy that the youth brings to them. Right. And the youth, when they think about, I want wisdom. Like right now, um, you know, maybe this situation in my life feels so overwhelming and I'm so stressed and I'm so depressed but somebody who's lived a life that can look in the rearview mirror and say, honey, listen, let me tell you right. what it feels like today and here's what happens and here's where you go. It's bringing about the value and the richness that can, that can happen in those relationships. I just think it's amazing. You look at some of these people and what they have been through oh, and you're yeah. like, oh my yeah. God, if they can do this, then oh, yeah. I can certainly do this. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's like, it's history that comes alive for our college kids or our high school kids. You know, you're not reading about things in a book. You know, if you're dealing with somebody who lived through World War II or who had other experiences, you now have a face. And then that adds to your empathy. It helps us reduce bias and prejudice because now you have a different visual. You have an actual relationship. And that's ultimately our goal and our vision with this organization. Which is just terrific. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, again, young people, old people, doesn't make a difference. Don't no. even look at age. Right. We're all people. Exactly. Exactly. And usually when we think about intergenerational programs, 
programs, it's usually people going, oh, I know about that. It's the, the children singing songs to the nursing home no, residents. No, right, no. And it can be, and it I don't want to be. minimize right. that, but we're talking about truly developing relationships right. like you would with your family and creating those families, because it takes a tribe to get through this life. It really does. I mean, it really does. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, we're, part, it does. we're glad that you're a part of our tribe. Well, I'm so happy to be part of yours as well. Thank All right, you. again, Dr. Lori is the author of Put On Your Big Girl Shoes, Stepping Into Courage, Resilience, and Gratitude. To learn more about her and the Nana's Tribe Foundation, visit drlori.net.